Well, this is okay. why she just started that. recording. Okay. okay, so welcome to um, another Angela's Caches with my new friend Heather Brown, aka Prue Halliwell. Um, we've had quite feedback from the last time we got together. It's not our intention to be um, gossiping cronies whatsoever. What we are is wise, wild women exposing evil. www.ee and we will continue to do that. And uh, our intentions are for evil to be exposed, for lost children to be found, children in captivity to be released, and anybody that's obstructing that to be exposed. So here we go. Welcome back, Heather. Okay. Well, the first thing we're going to look at is this Shiva Burton person, isn't it? Who I say is running hoaxes. All right. Let me just give people a background because we get new viewers every week. So I've been, uh, Heather is a, are you an ex Mackenzie friend? Would you describe yourself? No, I still do Mackenzie friends. Okay, so Heather is a, a Mackenzie. Money for it. I'm not like Belinda who, and Sabine who they ask for money for this. Well, I, I don't have a problem with, with money flowing. I, I don't want to get rich, but neither do I want to starve or die or get imprisoned or sectioned, you know, for lack of, travel funds, nor do I want to beg on the streets again or, you know, um, you know, accompany a shoplifting expedition to Little. <laughs> I, I don't have an issue. <laughs> I might have dropped down dead if she had to come out of the shop with I got a contact. Uh, uh, no, credit where credit's due, Jockney contacted me. Oh, did she? What did she say? Yeah. She was very conciliatory. I might read it. I might read it. And, um, yeah, no, I'm, see, that's what I admire. When somebody can, you see, you can't dish it out if you can't take it. Yeah. And Jockney took it. She, she was upset for a few days, but she took it, processed it, and then she contacted me. Well, I will never be going to little with that woman because I would shit myself. <laughs> I would be talking about the door and paying for the coffee and all the other stuff. <laughs> I would be so terrified of being no, just redistributed. Well, we were desperate. I didn't know, but I did. I did eat a croissant. So do you know what? But uh, my bottom line is, hats off. She was big enough to get in touch. Oh, okay. Well, but now what I'm saying about because this is going to people that are following Pizzagate, following the Hampstead cover up following MK Ultra, follow, I've got so many strands of viewers. Yeah. They're not, I don't have an apparently vast viewership, but they're very, they're very diverse. So what I want to say is that the Hampstead cover-up is something I've been working on for two years, more than two years. And uh, Heather is a McKenzie friend and an absolute veteran of campaigning against corruption in social services in councils, in police, uh, in, in the Conservative Party, who wanted me. The, what I was, what I've been told. By Let me just make a background first. Sorry, just because the two of us get off on a tangent and we love it. So I just want to say that the bottom line for Heather is her son was stolen at the age of six. He's twenty-five. We want to find him. His name is Binny and Brown. That's the bottom line. For me, my sister was murdered. I'm an MK Ultra and child uh, sexual abuse survivor. And I'm, for the most part, healed. And I'm passionately committed to not having what happened to me happen to more and more and more children. And Hoaxstead Research is a, a, a small blog with a tandem YouTube channel, depending on when they get taken down, but Mackenzie's Devils. And although they're small, they're very malicious, very satanic, very nefarious, very illegal, and very anonymous. So part of our remit is to uncover who is running this nasty, nasty, libelous, slanderous, defamatory, narrative spinning satanic hoaxed research so there we go we'll take it from there what did you want to say well the person running it oh, well actually what i was going to say is firstly um i don't take money as a mckenzie friend because you're not allowed to it's actually okay. illegal it's okay. illegal to take money as a mckenzie friend okay okay i don't know about that because i'm not one you you're not allowed unless you are actually registered with the law society as a solicitor you're not allowed to take money for giving legal advice you can go to prison for that 
So okay. I've always helped people um, for free, but some people, when I had to do like reports, back, I had to get background reports done on various professionals in care cases, some people just expected me to pay for the report. I mean, people just take bloody liberties. That's why I don't do it so much yeah. anymore. Yeah, that's the point I'm making is that, you know, it's fine, you know, not to give legal advice or whatever, but there's practicalities um, that I think are perfectly reasonable. It's fine to even volunteer your time, but you shouldn't be in debit for it. You shouldn't be in debt for helping other people. You should, I don't think that's right. Well, no, the people should be having to pay for their own reports. There was one particular woman she'd had, I had done over 30 re online reports. I had to get reports on, on the psychologist who had dealt with her children because I was to discharge her care orders. And the psychologist who dealt with her children was American. She turned out to be a mentally ill woman from the Scientologist. Uh, sorry, that is she's called, and it turned out what's she her was, name? Sorry, I need to start writing this stuff down. Her name is Laurie Beth Bisbee. You better to spell that for me. L O R I, Laurie. Yeah. And then Beth, B E T H, and then Bisbee, B I S B E Y. And she was, um, what was her job? So, yeah, Scientology. She was. They'd had, her and her husband, Stephen Bisbee, had had a row with the Scientologist in San Francisco. Right. And with another woman called Morag, they had gone and they had burgled the Scientology church. I kid you not, you couldn't make it up. No. They had gone and they had burgled the Scientology church. And they, what they said was, we took some artifacts. Well, I don't know what the artifacts that they still were, but the Scientologist chased them from America into Bulgaria and into Northern Europe and came after them and had them arrested in Belgium. The Scientologists actually came after them to get them to... Yeah, no, I, I've, I've studied quite a bit on Scientology. And first of all, I'm half Irish, so I've got that rebel in me. And um, the amount of money that one pays in these cults to advance through the ranks and for the privilege of being audited you know, so that you can spill your guts and then they've got control over you. People pay up to a hundred grand or more in these cults. So I can, I don't condone theft or break-ins, but at the same time I can empathize. You know, it's like if you find yourself 30 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand out of pocket, you might feel like going to get a few drinks. Oh, no, these wanted to, these wanted to actually take over the Scientologists and there was some kind of, um, power struggle, so they burgled the Scientologists and ran away. And then the, the bloody Scientologists come after them and ran off. Yeah, the Scientologists, the, 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 they've been in the, in the news a lot for the way that they uh, actually target people that leave. Target well, they, is off the charts for people that leave, people that betray the course. There's a name for them. Um, some they've got this name for them. Yes, I know what the you mean. Person, an SP. Yeah. They, they try and break families up. So if you get involved with the Scientology cult and then your mother, say for instance, is not comfortable about that and won't join. She's an SP. She's an SP. She's regarded as an enemy. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a laugh. Scientology was illegal in Britain in the nineteen until until nineteen eighty one. So 1978, 79, 1980, the Scientologists used to come on visas from America to Ireland every summer to Dublin. And they used to be for a month in the north of the Libby in O'Connell Street. And then the other month they would go to Grafton Street. So we, and what they would do was they would offer you two pounds to do a survey. They would offer you, they would give you two pounds, not you give it to them. They'd yeah, give I understand, you, yeah, yeah. So we used to get the two quid off them and then they would give you things to read about auditing and they would give you another 50 pounds to read this. And then they would give you 200 pounds to read the Dianetics Bible. We used to take the Dianetics Bible and throw it in the bloody lift. We, didn't. <laughs> we used to target them. We used to walk up and down dressed in different clothes and get repeated amounts the two pounds, the 50 pounds, then the 200 pounds. And we knew what to tell them on their survey to make them take us a step further to give us more money. And we used to target them and get the money off them. 
Because we, I mean, I was 17, I lived in a flat, I had to pay rent. So we would target them the first month when they were in O'Connell Street. And then the next month when different ones would come to Grafton Street, we would go and we'd get another further 200 quid off I, I was told to read L. Ron Hubbard's Dianetics for Homework. I was talking about this on an interview a couple of days ago. I was in a cult similar called Est, and uh, part of our homework was to read L. Ron Hubbard's Dianetics. And I never did. I, I, I think I lied. I think I said I'd read it. But I just... Well, we used to take it and straight away throw these yeah, books. I, I, I just had an aversion, and I'm very grateful for that. I've got, like, there's certain things I'll go to read them, and it's just like, ugh. And, and <laughs> you talk about in Satanism and publishing and so on that they will cast spells on published works. You know, there are, there is evidence to indicate that my little spiritual discernment where I go, oh, I don't want to read that, that's actually, you know, it's got good grounds. Well, I don't think they were casting any spells because we just took the book off them and took the 200 <laughs> I mean, what, what kind of person will say, here is 200 pound, here is a book, go and read this book. Because if you tell that to teenagers, the teenagers will just throw the book away. And incredible. These that. people were idiotic. I mean, we just were laughing at them. And there were so many of us doing this. I mean, I know, because you get the Jehovah's Witnesses going out two by two. My sister best. that was killed um, almost got sucked into the Moonies when she was living in Germany. They're mad. She was living in Cologne and she... I remember her contacting me. I don't know if it was a phone call or what it was, but she said, oh, these people keep coming to visit me for a chat and they're really nice and I'm really lonely and homesick and so it's just nice to chat. And I, and I was like, well, where are they from? What are they? Well, oh, something like Moonies. And I'm like, ah, run, run. Oh, yeah. the door, you well, know? I had, so when I was a teenager, there was a Jehovah Witness woman that used to keep coming to my house in Kilaine and the woman I live with ended up grabbing the books off of her and tearing the books. This is what I think your books she said. She was tearing up there. It's quite books. sad. It's um, quite sad in a way because those people doorstepping and sometimes they'll take children and that's obscene. I was 14. She kept tapping me for money because I had my own little business, ironing business. And this Jehovah Witness was um, telling me, could I come out to, for coffee with her? So we went to John Mooney and O'Brien. And then she said, can you give me any money? Have you any money you can give me? Can you get me some money? Well, maybe she wanted to break free, but it is quite sad because in the JWs, uh, they tell them they're, they're sort of trying to earn their way. They've got this crazy doctrine where you have to earn your way to be one of the 144,000. It's total twisted scripture. It's they were around here a few weeks ago and I told them I would set my two large dogs on them. I mean, I've got three cats, I haven't got two large dogs. <laughs> I said, do you want me to set these dogs on you? I said, do you want me to open the door and let these dogs out? In a way, it would be better if we could educate ourselves about all the errors in the cult that they're in and actually try and help them. But they are trained not to listen to any scriptures that aren't in their adapted well the person who is running this thing is called shiva burton and she's really okay <laughs> right so shiva burton is now good this is to do with hoaxed research and i'll just, can i just give a background on how yeah, I go on. Her. shiva burton aka sue melrose and i think she might have another aka yeah she has another aka which is susan burton Oh, very good. Right. Because I think Burton must be her maiden name. Melrose was her married name. Yeah. I mean, Susan, what did you do to Mr. Melrose? Did he hightail it and run like hell away from you? I bet he did. Susan. I bet Mr. Melrose has emigrated to maybe outer Mongolia or the moon to get away from her because she's a loop the loop. The woman's okay. a cuckoo. Now, if we go to her website, it's very interesting because few paragraphs down, she writes about Angela Power Disney. Oh, she's Angela obsessed. Power Disney wouldn't speak to me. She wouldn't have anything to do with me. So I put myself into her arena. So she stalked you to get herself into your arena. This yeah, and I think that's a fair admission of a stalking. And I, there is, I talked about a um, class action against Hoaxted. And although I've been taunted about where's the evidence, 
Uh, well, you couldn't you, take you, a class you watch this space. Now, somebody who's on the radar very visibly is Julian Vane, but um, Sue Burton, you know, you're, you're pretty high up the list. I just want to say she... She admins it. She She's, admins Hoaxted because yeah, she... Yeah, she I, um, I went stomping all over their site because, A, they have breached intellectual property rights. Well, I know. Yeah, I know. Because they have stolen a song by a man called Roy Chubby Brown called Dolly Parton's Tits. And they have alluded this song to me about Dolly Parton's Tits. Yeah. And they have um, stolen Roy Chubby Brown's image and put my face on it. Yeah. So Roy Chubby Brown's management company are not best pleased to hear about what has been going on, Handshake Management. Good. They're not very happy to hear about this because they haven't paid to use his song. They're yes. not allowed to use people's stuff. You're not allowed to steal people's music and um, images yeah. unless you actually pay to use them. I mean, I mean Roy yeah. Chubby Brown is a commercial artist. Yeah. He's a comedian. So uh, he expects to be paid if his songs are being used. Yeah. But Shiva Burton is a deranged, mad communist who thinks she can take and use whatever the fuck she likes. Because I mean, it's, it's hiding behind fake names and fake profiles. Oh, but, but these, I don't know that. where she lives. This is not fake names. Her name is Shiva Burton, and I know where she lives in Croydon. So oh, watch yeah. out, dear madam. Because I don't live far from Croydon. Let's not let's not have that be interpreted as a threat because we don't want the video taken down. No, no, but I won't be long of going asking her who she thinks she is and does she actually know me and why yeah. is she blabbering yeah. on about yeah. me? I'll just be clear that we're not making any uh, physical threats unlike Hoaxted Research does under fake profiles, which we will continue to expose today. Well, but quite a lot say, of things have I just want to say something. Yeah. Right. So I first encountered her and I bought her very good cover story of being a historical survivor, hugely active in the early uh, 90s. Let me, let me finish, stop let, you there. Let me finish. I bought her cover story of yeah. being a victim of her father, hugely active in the early 90s, interviewed by different people, you know, rallies and blah, blah. Then she says she took a break for 10 or 15 years. And then, and then let me finish, okay. but let me finish. Then she resurfaced um, and said, oh, you know, I saw that you needed me again. So I've come back to the front line and I'm gonna, you know, diss David Icke and Bill Maloney and Belinda McKenzie and Holly Gregg. And I'm gonna diss everybody and I'm gonna come back and be the big star. And, and she referred me to her early videos and interviews and so on. So I, tread, I trod very carefully and treated her as a fellow survivor, but something wasn't ringing true. Something wasn't ringing right. Now, 90, something like 98% of disclose, disclosures about child sexual abuse are true. So I just thought, right, I'll, I'll get over the fact that I'm getting red flags. I'll get over the fact that she's being aggressive, competitive, paranoid, nasty, mm, malicious, all those things. I thought, I'll get over it because a lot of survivors are wounded and they lash out. So I engaged with her for quite a while. And it, all the time my intuition was saying, uh, 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 something's not right. Well, but she I, went after you to get I still you. Kept, I still kept treading lightly. And then, it, and then it took a while for me to realize, do you know what? She's a police undercover uh, operative. She has had a story manufactured so that she can, get her sympathy, story. she can gain the sympathy of other survivors and they can think, oh, look at that mean Angie Power Disney. Oh, she just gaslighted Sheba. Oh dear, she just triggered Shiva. Isn't that terrible? Is she a fucking Alsatian? She can be triggered by words. What is she? A no, 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 we can. I don't want, I, I, I am very reverent towards survivors because I am one. And I'm very reverent because I believe that 95 to 98% of survivors are telling the truth, whether they've got a fancy blog or website or evidence or not. I just know, I have a truth radar. But sadly, 
she comes up on my truth radar as an undercover cop who was yeah. who was wheeled out in the early 90s and given a good background and then she was you know went off and had her addictions or you know gave up her kid at 16 or yeah, whatever good. she did Revolting she was woman. wheeled out again because the movement was gaining momentum with Nottingham, with White Flowers, with Brenda McNamara, with Bill Maloney, the, 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 the exposing child abuse was gaining momentum and they were close to exposing the um, Westminster paedophile ring. And I think they just wheeled her out again. I think they just put her on salary again and yeah. out came and she dissed me, she dissed Fiona Barnett, she dissed, she dissed everybody that was genuine survivors. Now, I'm new and I don't know the half of everything, but she came in like a like her name. She means the goddess of destruction, destruction. and that's, that's what she does. Well, she didn't. Um, they didn't make up a story for her. Oh no, no, no! What they did was stole somebody else's story. There was a lady called Leslie Stubbing who was actually suing for compensation, and along appeared. Susan Malrose uh, shouting over Leslie Stubbings, going to the newspapers, uh, look at me, I'm an abused person. But you see, the law is and the law was that you had to make your legal claim within three years of maturity, within three years of being 18. So what the hell was she doing making a legal claim at 36? You have to make it by 21. What was she doing coming out to the newspapers? Oh, I'm going to have the law that's where, I got, that's where I got sucked in because I know survivors. I've met a survivor, for instance, that was 60 and she disclosed to me for the first time. She had had a chaotic, destroyed life. And, she was, and, and then she disclosed to me after a few days she disclosed to me and said I was raped as a child and I've never told anybody. So I, I, and then look at Clement Freud. There was a woman, 84 or something, disclosed for the first time about being abused by him with, mm. the, with her parents being complicit. So this is why her cover story was pretty good. But, but she stole her story from Freud. Leslie Stubbings. She yeah. stole Leslie yeah. Stubbings' story. That's what she did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like um, Secret Service agents uh, getting a fake birth certificate or something. They're very good at that. Well, she actually stole the, the Leslie Stubbing <coughs> um, legal case was ongoing when out came Sue Melrose saying that she was going to change the law. Well, Mr. Major says, thank you, Ms. Melrose, for your lovely letter. I have filed it in the circular file. The circular file is the circular one in the corner of the room with the bin bag in it. So that's where Mr. Major has put Sue Melrose's letter. And that's where he should put it. She, she is an agent. Um, the police put people in among groups to cause yeah. dissent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what she is. That's and right. that's, now, there is a very interesting thing by a lady called Sharon Kilby Zaki. Yeah, I read that, although I thought... It's very so, long-winded. No, I don't read it all because I read it, and although she brought out some very information, in, interesting information about Sue Burton, um, but she was also saying things that I wouldn't agree with, like, oh, if you're an abuse survivor, you should have evidence. Well, most abuse survivors' are, lives are destroyed, and the last thing on their mind is to be blogging the evidence. So... I didn't agree with everything Sharon said, but go ahead and read the highlights. I think her point was, if you want to be run into the newspapers, you have to be prepared to tell your story, not just to be stealing somebody else's yeah. story. I think fair, that was... Yeah, true. fair comment. Yeah, fair comment. You know, um, because um, if you run to the newspapers, you would have to tell... Oh, another thing is, Shiva Burton said she was on Kilroy. This is another lie. She was never on Kilroy. That's a perfect lie. She appeared with a, a bloke on the radio called yeah, Emily Jones. She appeared with him. Yeah, and he's quite a decent guy, but he probably, you see some people are so reverent, even myself included, that sometimes you get fooled. 
Sometimes you do get fooled. Well, I mean, she said about me, she's a nasty piece of work because I came on in, on video with you about my son and about Ted Heath and about my dealings with the police. She went after you. And she went after me. So she says that I want attention. No, she is the attention seeker, darling, because she's the one who is running to, who was, she's obsessed with the newspaper clippings of herself from 1993. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's nearly 25 years ago and she is obsessed and she has these newspaper clippings pinned up everywhere you look. Now, she runs both Shiva Birch and Cross of Change and she runs Hoaxted. Yeah. But if you look at Cross of Change... She's one really of the ones that runs Hoaxted. She's not the only one. I wanted... You keep talking because I'm going I'm to show you a nasty poison pen letter that she generated and sent about 50 of them out all around Ireland to my children's schools, charities I'd raised money for. Yes, that's right. I've, I've seen this like on their hoaxes. Neighbours, friends. It was horrendous. It, it, she, she, she's she really a very toxic, nasty person. She's yeah. nasty. No. Um, I mean, the fact is that... Um, she does mainly admin Hoaxted and also she admins Shiva Burton Cross of Change. And I know this because yeah. the two sites are linked up on WordPress. Okay. I went marauding around the wow. Hoaxted site, answering all the comments. <laughs> I went around making the most outrageous comments up and down their commentaries. Right. And the next thing well, I was told, we're going to ban you. Right. And I said, well, uh, go ahead, block what you like, ban what you like. What they do is they ban your Gmail login. But okay. when my Gmail login was banned from Hoaxed, it was also banned from Shiva Bird and Touch. Oh, so therefore, we know, therefore wow. we know, because wow. if you're banned from the one site, you're banned from the other. We know that the admins are linked up. Because wow. otherwise, I wouldn't have been banned from both sites. Wow, 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 wow. So I know, and also today, like I think about yesterday, she redid her Shiva Burton Cross of Change site, and it's just a regurgitation of things on Hoaxted. It's not yeah, a different yeah. site. No, I, I knew she was connected, but thank you for getting some IP evidence. That's, that's awesome. And just this is the nasty little, it was embarrassing. And uh, this is why I think when she was first wheeled out as an agent in the early 90s, her blogs used to apparently look fairly educated. But the latest, version, the latest version of her is not very good with, with English and grammar and so on. Hmm. This, is, this, is, like, this was their letterhead. Look at this. Oh, that's not good. Hoaxed research. And then it was this nasty... You know, badly typed, badly put together, little nasty missive. What do you expect? She's a snackhead. I mean, she's a heroin addict. What do you expect from a heroin well, addict? Well, again, I've, I told you, I just did a show with somebody that got clean from heroin and a lot of survivors, and this was like, this was, they made sure, they thought they made sure they couldn't be traced. This was the pathetic envelope. There was no signature. No return address, no email address, all it linked to. I mean, I've carried it around, I've shown it to people. God, Angela, she must have it in for you because she's actually paying for postage to Ireland. Yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. cheap. All it linked to was the Hoaxted site. No signature, no handwriting. Well, they must really have it in for you because they're actually paying to post things to Ireland. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's plenty of... That's the other point, is that there is money behind Hoaxted. And it has uh, allegedly been linked to the CIA. And even um, in America, they've said they're holding back on sort of really going mad on Pizzagate because it links up with the Hampstead cult and it links up with the British Parliament. Now, an ex you know, uh, FBI guy has said the delay is because it could bring down the British Parliament. It's linked to well. That. You know that um, in order to keep people under their thumb, the police will create a vulnerability in somebody to keep them as an agent. They will create a vice such as alcoholism, 
yeah. gambling profit. Look yeah, or get some dirt on them, which they no doubt have. Because no, no, they will get them addicted to something so that they can say, we'll give you some stuff if you do what we want. This is what they do. Do you think she's still running addictions? She's admitted to alcohol addiction. Has she admitted to... Well, she says you're an alcoholic. Haven't you seen what she's written on this shift? No, this... I don't read it. I don't read it. No, on her Shiva Burge and Cross. I never go near it. This is what... Right, right. I want to say something else. I, somebody gave me a prophetic dream and part of it was that one of my biggest enemies was in a rage because I was ignoring them. That's her. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I would just like to issue an invitation to Sue Burton to join myself and Heather on a show. And I would also like to reiterate that I did try compassionately and empathically to engage with what I thought was a genuine survivor for, for no, months, no. for months, until suddenly it was like a hammer on my head. You're casting your pill before swine. This is not a survivor. This is uh, an undercover cop. Wait, wait. Do an I hear the sound of running cop. feet? I hear the sound of running feet coming, running to us. Is it her coming to do an interview with us? Wait, wait. Well, no, more isn't. than welcome, Sue Melrose. More than welcome. Sue well, exactly. AK, Shiva Burton, AK, Sue Burton, AK. Who knows? But the thing is that uh, I don't know, because I think she's she's like an informant, but not an informant. What's the word? Like an undercover cop. Yeah, quite and a pro agent. Blackmailed. Even if she's blackmailed to do this because she needs her heroin or whatever, whatever it is keeps her doing it. She's. Um, Likely, if, if we went after her to sue her or, or paid her a visit, she'd have backup. She would. She'd have backup with corruption. Well, I wonder what she's going to do when Chubby, Roy Chubby Brown's management agent wants to know why their stuff is being Well, used. I think what, what you're on... Yeah. What you're on to is huge because to prove that she's one of the main hoax debtors lays her open to private prosecution, civil prosecution, all sorts. Well, I will tell you something. I think she is the scarlet scoop and she's also Al Coyote because the writing styles are the same. And you okay. yourselves have had a linguist look at the thing and the linguist told you a lot of it is one person writing to them. Yeah, oh. yeah, definitely. Well, this is the impression that I get because it's all written in monotone. Quite a lot of it's written monotone. They were actually fighting with each other on the comments this morning um, where they've put up about Belinda McKenzie being arrested and one of them has written, well, I don't want anything deleted. Why would you go around deleting things? So there's whoever else... Yeah, I know the same with Julian Vane. When we exposed Julian Vane as being the Twitter account uh, linked to Hoaxstead, um, Link to is yeah, let me finish. Let me finish. We've got to not interrupt. I need to get this out. Well, when we exposed Julian Vane as being the IP connected to Hoaxstead's Twitter account, connected to Satanic Views, there are consequences. There, there, there are consequences in the pipeline. Definitely, definitely. So the more Hoaxsteaders we can identify, then let Chubby's manager and let legal actions and let personal actions come and come in their torrents because they've had it coming but the only the only thing is if they are financed by cia or gchq or corrupt coppers etc you can guarantee somebody will put some money in the pot for their legal defense well i don't really care about taking them to court because i just think they're a crock of shit i think they are no, they are embarrassing they're an embarrassment to humanity even the satanists say that even the satanists say do you know even the hampstead residents don't want anything to do with them they've written to them and said you know how to like james hind for instance which you're saying to me is not julian bain not julian bain okay but even he is boasting and trying to go overt about Oh, I'm a, I'm a bona fide Satanist and I'm exposing the Hampstead hoax. And even the Hampstead residents have written in and said, here you are trying to discredit a Satanic cult and proclaiming proudly from the rooftops that you're a Satanist. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, and also there was somebody else from Hampstead that said, we would be more than happy to have a database and to have investigations done because it will clear our names 
because not everybody in Hampstead is part of this cult. Well, I think, and this is what I think about this Shiva Burton, I think she has a fixation about uh, B rating. She's talking me. She's talking me. Not about you. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, she was. Stu- well, you know who else she stalked? A person called David Shirter. Sh- now, he's a fellow survivor, and some people say to me, why do I still promote him? Because I know he's telling the truth. But he's gotten so head mashed with the trolling that he's like, he said, oh, Angie's part of Hoaxstead, and he's discredited me in a few blogs. I don't mind, I forgive him. I know he's a genuine survivor. Well, she actually stalked him to the point where he wrote on his blog, help me, help me, I've got this woman called Sheila Bear. I was like, she's demonic. She's she's demonically... He uh, was actually, you could see, he was terrified on his blog. And he was saying, she's going to come to Seattle. That's what makes me think she's a paid operative. Because yeah. it's, not, it's not just me. She goes after high-level, truth-telling survivors. Well, I have nothing to do with Hampstead and the silly bitch went no, after me. No, you've got a lot of information. So, but she but went after me. Can you put... I know, but it's because you aligned with me and you've also got a lot of information to disclose. Can you put a light on? Yeah, hold on. <clears throat> anyway, that's enough time. Sue Burton, you're welcome on the show, and um, Jesus loves you. There you go. I forgive you, and I forgive your family for what they did, and not to forgive them to justify if there ever was some truth, because there may be, but I just stand in the gap long enough for your eyes to be open, your ears to be open, your heart to be softened, so you can choose to repent and stop what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Well, I'm not Angela and I don't forgive her because do you know what the stupid bitch has been up to next? What's she doing? She had people hunting around the internet looking for my son. I know. Goes anywhere I know. near my son and I will be on her yeah, that's what I'm saying. Point. Don't make any threats that we have to back off of. But that's what I'm saying. She is satanically, demonically driven. She's that, mental. But Never no, mind that's satanic. why I, I'm standing in the gap. The worst Satanist can repent on their deathbed and still be safe. Listen, that's the end of part one. We're going to take a five minute break and then we'll go into part two. I want to address um, Rick Dougal, George Dufort, Julian Vane, Bridget York. I want, to, I want to look into some other names. So that's enough. I hope you've had enough attention, Sue. And like I said, if you want more attention, do come on the show. And if not, get with God and you can be forgiven. Or just get a life, you mad old cow, is what (laughs) I've got to say about Get a fucking life. Stay away from me and leave my son alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seriously, you don't want to rouse the mother tiger. You really don't. Right, five-minute break.